Hey, in today's video, I want to talk to you about why you should do the thing you always wanted. So many of us have ideas, goals, dreams that we know in our heart we want to do, or that we just have a small inclination that we would want to try those things out, and we just don't. Because of many different reasons, but one huge reason that I see is because we have been taught to wait until we have directions to get somewhere, or to follow a certain path that has been carved in the past. And the truth is that many of us lose ourselves doing what other people want us to do. And so today I want to encourage you to do the opposite. I want to encourage you to do that thing you always wanted to do. Before we get started, I do want to clarify that this is more about things that are risky or that you're free to do. I understand that right now with the whole pandemic and everything, we can't do everything that we want. And like, I almost didn't want to do this video because of everything that is going on. But if you really think about it in life, we always have challenges. Even if it's something as you don't have the job that you want or you don't get paid enough to do the things that you want. While I do want to be sensitive about the things that we're going through in life, I think that this video applies at any moment in time, honestly. The reason I'm making this video is because when I look back on my life, I realize the biggest obstacle to doing the things that I really wanted to do and that I knew in my heart I always wanted to do, the biggest obstacle was myself. I am my own worst critic and I will always in the past hold myself back at times even before I got started. I think I told you guys the story about how I started painting. I started painting at 24, but I don't know if I've told you guys the story of how I stopped painting when I was like 10 or 11. So I've always been a very creative kid, but I've never been somebody that draws. And for some reason, when I was little, my sister taught me how to draw this beach, like this very simple picture of a beach. And for whatever reason, I, at some point, my mom got me acrylic paints, like really cheap acrylic paints. And I would just paint that beach. <laughs> and one day I realized like, look, I want to challenge myself. I want to move up and paint a still life. So I gathered this bowl and put a bunch of fruit in it. And so first I drew the bowl in pencil and then I painted it over. And I remember when I was done, I looked over at my still life and I was so disappointed because it was just... It just didn't look how it was supposed to look. I don't even understand where I saw pictures of still lives or anything like that. But I just knew it didn't look like some hyper-realistic Goya painting. It was flat, it was chalky. I remember vividly you could see the pencil outline through the yellow paint, through all the paints. <laughs> they were super cheap. And I was just so disappointed. And all I remember is like, I told myself, you know what, I, I guess painting is not for me. And I literally never painted again. I never even showed anybody my painting. No one ever made a big deal about me not painting anymore. It was just, I just stopped. I never even tried ever again. And how I started painting 15 years later is because when I went into a museum, I remembered that I used to paint. And I remember this instance where, you know, I drew this bad still life. I painted it over. And I just gave up because I wasn't a master, basically. And of course, I couldn't have been a master the first time I ever did anything. What bothered me most about this whole situation was if I would have just kept going and if I would have kept painting and I would have kept drawing, I would have by then had 15 years of experience painting. And maybe I would have the ability to paint hyper-realistic still lives by then. But I didn't because I prematurely judged myself and took away the opportunity to ever even get better. And honestly, I know I'm not the only person that does this kind of thing because I would see the same kind of behavior in people at the gym when I would go practice martial arts before COVID. I think I've told you guys, I often got paired with people on their first day because if I was in the beginner class, then I was most likely the most advanced girl unless there were other fighters there. They would pair me up with somebody on their first day and they would do great. Like some people would do so good on their first day and they would, by the end of the class, I would ask them like, how did it feel? Like, what do you think about it? And so many of them, and not just girls, guys too, but so many of them on their first day would say, I don't think this is for me. I'm just not good at it. Like, look at you. I don't think I could ever be that good. 
And it just reminded me of myself with the whole painting situation because you can't be the best on your first day. And I will tell them, like, there's no way you're going to be where I'm at on your first day because I'm on my fourth year and I'm not even the best. I am just on my fourth year. And to a lot of people like that, it didn't make sense. Like, they expected themselves to be perfect from day one. They expected themselves to be, like, agile, fast, technically perfect. And that's exactly what I expected of myself back when I was 10 years old painting a still life for the first time. So I know there's a big chance there are areas in life in which you are judging yourself and taking away the opportunity to be good at something in the future because you don't want to suck in the now. <laughs> and that is just the cold, hard truth of anything you do in life. You're going to be terrible at it when you start. Like, you're going to be bad when you start. And the only thing... The only thing that separates a master is that they're willing to put up with being bad at it for a very long time. And even then, when you cultivate a skill, you're still going to have periods in time where you feel like you suck and you plateau, and then you get a little bit better. I still go through that same feeling with YouTube still. I feel like, oh my gosh, I suck so badly. <laughs> and then, of course, I look at my videos later, like a month later or something, and I'm like, like that's not so bad and actually i was even worse two years ago <laughs> honestly i just want to encourage you to stop judging yourself and consider giving it a try to the things that you feel like you always wanted to do especially if they feel like very little things um but i think sometimes we judge ourselves because we're afraid that the people around us will judge us and what we really don't want to have is the judgment from other people but to be honest People will judge you no matter what you do. No matter what you do, there's always going to be people telling you you shouldn't be doing that thing. And especially if what you do has risk involved, like even being an artist has risk involved because you can clearly make a fool out of yourself <laughs> at any given moment in time. And to other people, for example, that might be really scary. I have people on both sides of the equation. I have people telling me to stop trying to do YouTube and I have people tell me that I'm courageous for doing YouTube that I'm super creative for wanting to do so so it really honestly doesn't even freaking matter what other people tell you as long as you're not hurting yourself or other people it really matters where you tell yourself and that you're compassionate with yourself because you're your own worst critic so stop that So now let's talk about what if you follow other people's advice? What if you do something that has some kind of like instructions or there's a clear path to follow? Kind of ironic, but even if you do everything that you're supposed to do, you can still actually fail. I feel like to me this has happened twice so far in my life. I actually never knew what I wanted to do after college, but that's actually a lie that I told myself. I actually always knew that I wanted to be an artist. It was just, I didn't know what kind of artist. I didn't know what type of art I would end up doing. And of course, as I got closer and closer to graduation, I started to freak out because I still didn't really have a plan. And all of my teachers at school just kept saying to me, you would be a good teacher. You should be a teacher. And they would like point me towards programs that basically it led me to being a teacher. I actually visited schools to look at PhD programs so that I would become, in case I wanted to become like a Spanish teacher at a university. And at the very last minute, I didn't actually apply to grad schools because I could tell right then and there I didn't want to spend seven more years in school. But I still was so afraid of what am I going to do if I don't have a plan that of course, as you may or may not know already, I decided to try to be a teacher by enrolling into Teach for America, which, watch my video, do not join Teach for America. The point of the program is that they say they're going to train you to be a teacher, but it's not really a good program. Anyway, watch my video if you really want to get the tea about Teach for America. But the long story short, what I'm trying to get at is I still failed. <laughs> Even though I followed a kind of plan or a career that is established, uh, in traditional and there's like an easy way to see how you would go from one step to the other, I still failed. 
First of all, that is something that people that were intelligent were advising me to do, right? But like I said, you can still do everything right, everything you're supposed to do, and still fail. As you guys may or may not know, I train martial arts when there's no COVID and I had a first fight and I felt like I did everything right. I followed all the instructions that my coaches gave me. I upped my training, I watched my diet, I watched my weight, and guess what? I still failed. <laughs> I still lost my first fight. And so if that's a real possibility at any given moment in time, wouldn't you just rather do the thing you always wanted to do? Because even if you do the logical things or things where there's a plan of action or whatever, a path, you can still fail. So in my opinion, you might as well fail doing something that you love and something that actually gets you excited about doing it. And I don't mean for that to be like super depressing or anything because of course, it's very discouraging when you do everything that you were supposed to do and you still fail. But to me, what that tells me is that you can do something incorrectly and actually succeed. Because that's the other side of that coin. If you can do everything perfectly and fail, you can do something imperfectly and succeed. I mean, failure is still an option, but... <laughs> In both outcome, in both paths, doing everything perfectly or like somebody told you to do it, you can fail and you can succeed, but also you can do something imperfectly and you can fail and you can succeed. So what the hell do you actually do then? <laughs> I'm making this video because I actually want to encourage you to begin to learn to listen to your heart. And that sounds really cheesy. <laughs> I don't know, probably just lame, but haven't you had experiences in life where you listened to an intuition you had or just a feeling you had and it was correct and it helped you in life? And there were other times in life when you did something that seemed logical and it didn't work out? I feel like your intuition or your heart, whatever you want to call it, you're the voice inside of you sometimes has some kind of intelligence that is mm, that is more that is wiser than like our brain can put together like maybe we don't understand how to make sense of the logic of our heart of our intuition but it often guides us to good outcomes it's crazy that one small thing can lead you to so many other things happening in your life. So back in 2014, when I came back from Teach for America and I got the first job that I could find and eventually I started hating that job. I literally quit and I felt like I was at the edge of the world because what was mostly making me freak out is that maybe some three or four months before, I had just signed a year lease at the place where I was living. So I was like, how am I gonna pay for this? How am I gonna live? <laughs> and of course, I went in instantly, I went into panic mode and I started to apply to every single job that I could online. And I remember I went like a couple days just like sending hundreds and hundreds of resumes and I was so like, I was just exhausted. And I remember, I think it was a Tuesday that I was just so exhausted of sending my resumes and it was only like noon. <laughs> It was only like 12 p.m. and I just, I was like, that's it, like, I've exhausted. I've exhausted all the new links, all the new, like, job advertisements. And, and I'm literally, like, I literally have nothing to do. What if instead of sitting here just freaking out, what if I just go to the beach? That's literally always been, like, my favorite place in L.A. And I literally had nothing to do. Everybody else was working or at school. Literally everybody else has something going on. So I just went to the beach by myself, something I had never ever done before. Like I just, I just went to the beach. I went to Venice Beach because that was my favorite beach. And I just remember like finally feeling like I could take a break and just like relax. And I remember I just laying there on the beach and I looked at all the buildings and I just, started thinking to myself like i've always loved 
Venice Beach and I always had this feeling that I just would love to live in Venice one day. And then I started to think, well, it only took me 30 minutes to drive here. What if I started expanding my job search to this area? And I literally didn't think much else of it. But that's exactly what I did when I got home and the days following. I started looking for jobs in the Venice and Santa Monica area. And the crazy thing is, you guys, is that I actually got a job interview like two days later. And I actually ended up getting the job like a few days later after that. And it literally changed my entire life. <laughs> Everything that I do today, I literally started doing when I moved to the Venice Santa Monica area. Started going to painting classes, started incorporating my painting into my YouTube videos. I sold paintings and I realized that that could be a viable career for me. I found martial arts and I started to have a new outlet and a new sense of empowerment for myself. Eventually, I even found an art community. Literally, my entire life today, it was like a domino effect from that one day that I was just sitting there feeling sorry for myself and I thought, what if I just go to the beach and feel better? <laughs> but what I want to get to with that story is what was that thing that made me feel like, what if I just go to the beach? That was intuition. That was just me listening to my voice inside. Everything else after that, there's kind of like some logic to it, right? Nobody in their right mind when I would be looking for a job would have told me what if you go to the beach, right? It's, it's like counterintuitive. And the crazy thing about intuition that I've noticed, it's sometimes like a very quiet whisper, like, what if you do this? So quiet that if you don't pay attention, the idea will literally leave your brain. If you're actually thinking about something like, I should do this. Oh no, what if I don't do it? What if I do do it? Oh my gosh, should I do this? Should I not do that? That's anxiety. <laughs> and sometimes it's hard telling intuition apart from anxiety, but that's just what I've noticed. Intuition, if you don't listen to it immediately and you don't act upon it, the idea usually just leaves. And I feel like so many of us try to control life. We, of course, and obviously, Nobody wants to feel negative emotions. Nobody wants to feel sadness, pain, humiliation, failure, loneliness, fear. No one in their right mind wants to feel those emotions. And we do so much to try to avoid those emotions. But like I said, even when you do everything that you're supposed to do to try to avoid the emotions, you can actually end up experiencing them because that's life. You're not just meant to just like feel safe and happy 24-7. There's a whole range of human emotion that we're supposed to experience, a whole range of experiences that we will go through in life. And sometimes we stifle our own growth and our own, our own life experiences. We stifle them attempting to stop our suffering. I don't think it's really our choice that we don't get to suffer or that we can avoid any failure or like any misstep. I think that's just part of growing up. And so that's why I'm making this video today because I want to encourage you to really begin to pay attention to what are those little things that you have been wanting to try and you just don't because you hold yourself back or you feel fear or doubt or or you don't feel like anybody else is pushing you to do those things. And maybe just the fact that you have those feelings inside of you, maybe those are worthy enough to just go ahead and try it out. Just give it a try. You never know the domino effect that a small decision would have on your life. Because you don't want to feel dumb or because you, you're just don't think you're good enough at this or smart enough or whatever it is that you're using to hold yourself back you're not just holding yourself back from that experience you're holding yourself back from all the possibilities that that experience will put you in alignment with and so i hope i'm making sense in this video because <laughs> this is one of those videos where like i don't even know if i'm making sense but i just feel like i should make it <laughs> so that's really all I wanted 
to talk to you about today. Thank you for watching. If you still are, subscribe if you like to continue talking about world domination. And thank you so much for watching, you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.